In this lecture, let us understand completely about callback hell. And at the end, I will be telling you what is the solution implemented to avoid callback hell. Understand this callback hell. Let us first understand the scenario. Using that scenario, we will be writing the code. And according to that, we are going to generate our result. So just imagine you want to order some food from a restaurant. And here we are having four steps. So first step, you should order the food. Second, your order will be accepted. Third, once the order is accepted, your food will start preparing. And finally, your food will be delivered. So these are the four steps involved when you want to order some food from restaurant. So just imagine, definitely it will not be happening in real time. To order a food, it will not take two seconds. But for this example, let us take the time in seconds. So to order the food, it will take two seconds. And to accept the order, it will be taking three seconds. And to prepare the food, it will take two seconds. And finally, to deliver the food, it will take three seconds. So in total, to complete this full process, it will take 10 seconds of time. And if you clearly notice here, each and every step is dependent on another step. If you don't order the food, your food will not be accepted. Okay, it will not happen anything. There is no way your order will be accepted and the food will be prepared for you. If you order the food, only when your order will be accepted. If your order is accepted, only then they will start with the preparation of food. If the order is not accepted, they will not start with the preparation. And this step is also dependent. If your food is prepared, only then food can be delivered. If it is not prepared, food cannot be delivered. So here, each and every step is dependent on each other. Without any step, I cannot proceed with another step. So we will take this example and we are going to implement in the code. And we will see how callback is implemented in JavaScript. Now before writing our example code, let me show you a simple example to understand callback hell. So definitely this is all about asynchronous JavaScript. So for that, I will be using set time out. Now what I want to do, I just want to display some data, one second passed, two second passed, three second passed. I just want to display this data after every one second. So let me show you how we can do. Here inside this, I will be passing. I just want to tell after one second, my data has to be executed. I will write here log and inside this simply I will write one second. And inside the same set timeout function, now what I want, after this, after this task is completed, I have to start another task. So again, I will copy the same thing. Copy and here I will be pasting. Now here what I will do, I will write two second past. So this is one second and this is another second. So in total, two seconds. So again, I will just paste here inside this. I will be writing three seconds. I will just change it to three. And again, inside this, I will be pasting. I will be writing four seconds. And here I will write 4. Now here what happens, this set timeout will run first and it is going to execute after 1 second. And inside that only you can see this set timeout is dependent on this one. Only after its execution this is going to run and only after its execution this will run and only after its execution this will run. So step by step they are going to run. And each and every call is dependent on other calls. Now if I save, see the result. 1 second passed, 2 second passed, 3 second passed and finally I will be having 4 second passed. So here I have to give 1 second and here also I should be giving 1 second. 
Now you see one second, two seconds, three seconds, and four seconds. So in total, this code will take four seconds to execute. Now, if you keep on adding some more callbacks here, it will be very messy and also our code will be very hard to maintain. And also it will be very difficult to implement in applications because if you get error in any one of the call, then whatever calls it is dependent on these calls, the entire thing will be stopped. We cannot proceed further. And one more thing you should remember, if your code is difficult to maintain, harder to understand, that means our code is open to generate more errors. Okay, you will be having more errors and in future, maybe it will be very time consuming to fix the errors and maybe you will not be able to find out the error. So now let us come back to our example and write one more example of callback help. So we are having four steps. First, we have to order food and it will be taking two seconds of time. Then second, order will be accepted. So I will write here accept order and it will take three seconds. Then we are having prepare food and it will be taking two seconds. And finally, we have deliver food. Here, let me just write here four point, and here I will write deliver food, and it will be taking three seconds. Okay, you can give any time. So, this is the example order food, accept the food, prepare the food, and deliver the food. Now, let us implement this to understand callback help. So, first, I will be writing set timeout. And inside this, now, instead of using arrow function, simply I am going to write the function. You can also use arrow function. I am just showing you different ways how you can write this set timeout function. Inside this, I will be writing log. This is my first step. I have to order the food. And it will be taking two seconds. I will just write it here. And I'm just going to wrap entire thing inside double quotes. How much time it is taking? It is taking two seconds. So I will write here two seconds. I will just copy this entire set timeout. Below this, I will be pasting. Now second step is to accept the order. I will copy. I will just change the spelling. Copy. And inside this, I'm going to paste. And how many seconds it is taking? It is taking 3 seconds. So I will write here 3. Then again, I am just going to copy. And inside this, I have to paste it here. It will be taking prepared food. And it is going to take 2 seconds. I will just paste. And here it is taking 3 seconds. I will just write here 2. And finally, last step is to deliver the food. Copy. Copy this entire thing. And inside this, I'm going to paste. And it will be taking three seconds. And I should be passing this message. Okay, do not get confused. Each and every call is dependent on previous call. If this call is not happening, this entire call will not be executed. So this, this is dependent on this one. This is dependent on these two. And this is dependent on these three. Again, you can see here, we got triangle shape, which means we have created callback hell. Now, just see the result. Save it. After two seconds, my food will be ordered. And it has taken two seconds. After three seconds, it got accepted. After two seconds, food is prepared. And finally, food is delivered in three seconds. So, this is the concept of callback hell and how you can understand we are entering into callback help by looking into this triangle shape and there is one more name for callback help that is called as pyramid of doom okay and why callback help is happening because we are nesting multiple asynchronous function definitely by looking at this you might be confused as a beginner but if you are very experienced, then you will be knowing this is callback help. 
and the solution to prevent callback hell we are having promises so using promises we can prevent this callback hell so later on we are going to understand about promises but using promises we can just avoid callback hell and using promises is the more modern way to fetch data from api okay, this is all about callback hell and when it is asked in interview you can give this example of ordering the food in a restaurant and you can just show the simple demo and later on i will be telling you how to write the same code using promises